Hi everyone, welcome to my first video. Today I'm going to show you how I got on with Wool and the Gang's Cable Bomber Knitting Kit. This was a first for me because I've never made a garment from a kit before. As you can see, they provide all the bits you need. They didn't have both sets of needles in stock though, so I had to buy my 10mm needle separately. I'm setting up my own needles on an interchangeable cable here. I always seem to forget how to do a slip knot, but I started with a tension gauge. It was my first time using a roving yarn and needles this big, so you can see it takes a little getting used to. I also knit in the English style, which is famously the slowest. At this stage I was really happy, the gauge looks very neat and I love the way the stitches look. I can't remember how exact the gauge was, but it was close enough to the numbers listed on the pattern. I thought the ball of ripped back wool looked like Tangela the Pokemon. I hadn't done the cable cast on technique before so I had to look it up. It took me some time to get my head around it as you can see from the faces I'm pulling, but it's certainly not the most complicated cast on technique. I've cast on the bottom hem of cardigan and the next few rows are done in single ribbing on the 10mm needles. This will make the bottom cinch in a little when we move on to the 15mm needles later. I have to say it looks really nice. I was on a big Animal Crossing kick when I filmed this. You can see here how the cardigan will have a kind of garter stitch trim up the front edges and that the back is worked in garter stitch too. The front two panels are done in stocking stitch because they will become the cables.
I'm starting the first cable. Now that I know how to do cables and how they work, I find it painful to <laughs> look at the footage of me learning. You can see that I'm using a stitch holder in place of a cable needle. I worked across the back of the cardigan and then repeated the start of the cable at the other end. You can see that with this wool, the crazy sexy wool as they call it, you can make something big quite quickly. That being said, it still took me a few months to finish this project because it was all done in my spare time and it is a big piece. Because you have to pull the stitches around each other when working a cable, they can get very tight and a bit difficult to work. You can see the start of the cable forming here. So then you just work in pattern for a few rows until the next link in the cable. You can see me untwisting the yarn here. I don't know if it was me or the roving yarn, but as I was working, the wool would get twisted around itself and I had to stop frequently to unwind it. I haven't seen anyone else complaining about this online, so I wonder if it was the way I held the wool on my fingers, but in any case, it was a pain to have to stop so often. The cable is coming out really nicely and I was happy with how neat it was for my first time. 
Around halfway up, the pattern asks you to work on just one of the front panels so that you can pick up the back and other front panel separately in order to create the slits for the armholes. I have finished the first cable and the right hand front panel, so I cast off. I felt very neat. You can see that the cardigan is getting big and I'm glad I decided to knit the smaller size. I ordered the kit for a size up because I wanted a roomier fit but when I saw the cardigan on Instagram and read that it fits very big I decided to make the smaller size. It's still bigger than I would like. The wool is expensive so I would recommend sizing down. The only thing is I don't know how well the circumference of the sleeves would fit size down. I think here I'm working on the back, which was very nice because it's in plain garter stitch. I have to say the crazy sexy wool looks really good. I don't know if all roving wool is like this, but I don't like the amount of loose fibres this wool sheds, and in certain lights it does look very frizzy. So I finished off the second front panel and I cast off. This is the whole body knitted and cast off. I'm trying to remember how to do the cable cast on technique for the sleeves. As you can see, I needed to look it up again. I don't know how it still takes me so long to tie a slip knot.
one cuff done. Onto the bigger needles again. A cable runs up each of the sleeves. It's done exactly the same way as on the front of the body. I didn't show it, but I did make a second sleeve and here are the three pieces together. I'm about to sew up the seams along the tops of the shoulders, so joining the front panels to the back panel. The pattern uses an invisible seam, and I think I did quite a neat job. It's almost invisible. Okay. For this video, I'm going to show you how to work the seams using a sewing machine. You see that that loop is mirrored, so you again you have this loop just basically sewn like so. The seam on the sleeves was a bit more challenging, but I managed and it doesn't look terrible. I forgot to film myself sewing the sleeve onto the body, probably because it took me three goes. The first time I tried, I did not follow the instructions and the pieces did not line up properly. The second time I did follow the instructions and it also did not work. So the third time I went on my intuition and the pieces came together all right in the end. You can see from this footage that I am not used to modeling clothes and I thought that the low evening light would look good. I really enjoyed making this project. It was great to use the bigger needles and thicker yarn and to learn how to knit a cable and how to do the cable cast on technique. Chunky knits come together really quickly. It's very satisfying. Unfortunately, it is not a piece that I'm going to wear very often. I didn't like the sizing. It's a heavy cardigan and it doesn't always look good on me. Another thing I don't like about it is the amount of fibers that shed from the wool. It is very warm and very cozy though, so I will keep it for winter evenings in. I hope you enjoyed my mixed review and my first video. Thanks for watching and tune in next time.